G'day, Blade Dickheads. Vaping Bogan back again for another Ridgy Didge review. Hope you're all doing good as gold. We've got a new variation in a very long running RTA series. I think the first one came out way back in like 2017, something like that. It's the Kylan 3 RTA from Vandy Vape. I very much have enjoyed the, uh, the Kylans over the years. The first one was uh, one of my favorite tanks for ages. And uh, the V2 and the V2 Mini, I think is the more recent one, uh, has been fantastic. This is now the new V3. I've got it sitting atop the Conduit Nostramo from Deathwish Mods. Beautiful DNA 250C mod from a few years ago. Haven't busted this out for a while, but uh, yeah, a fucking classic mod for uh, yeah, a classic series of RTAs. So as I said, I really love the original Kylan. It came out way back in 2017, and since then we've had quite a few different versions that have never failed to disappoint minis and V2s and all the rest of it. Uh, there's been a couple of mesh versions which I couldn't really care for because, well, you can't snow. I fucking hate mesh. But when it comes to the, uh, the Kylan and the uh, Kylan minis, they've always been fucking solid. And uh, it's nice we've got a, uh, a V3 finally. I think it's been about four years since the Kylan V2 came out. So uh, let's take it for a little ripperoo. I've got a 0.14 ohm set of aliens in here at uh, 100 watts. Plenty of fucking clouds. This is definitely geared towards those that like bigger coils, bigger fucking wattages, and bigger fucking vapor. If you like your beastie dual coil RTAs, then this one is for you, but uh, we'll also take uh, a large single coil. Now they have changed things up quite a bit from the V2. The V2 was a bottom airflow uh, RTA. This one now has it coming in from the top, which I think is what the V2 had. I think the V2 had top airflow. It seems to be the thing that everybody's doing now with their RTAs, top airflow, because Fucking people have forgotten how to wick. <laughs> I've never had a trouble with uh, leaking, but if you do have uh, a problem with your wicking sometimes, top airflow means you don't get juice just pouring out all over your fucking mod. We're gonna get down shortly and have a good squiz at this thing and show you how to wick it uh, properly. But before we can do that, yeah, we gotta have a fucking beer, eh? Found another one from 450 Brewing over in the US of A. This one is their Blackberry Cheesecake. It's a smoothie style sour ale. A smoothie style ale with blackberry, graham cracker, and cream cheese. Sounds fucking interesting. Never had cream cheese in a fucking beer before, or not that I remember. Uh, these guys are brewing over in Columbus, Indiana. Um, 450 Brewing Company. And it comes in at, uh, what have we got here? 5.3 fucking percent. Well, let's just see how it fucking tastes. Let's drink a beer. Let's drink a beer. Holy fuck, that is as thick as your dumb brother. Loads of blackberries by the looks of it in this one. Yeah, certainly smells like a fucking blackberry cake. Fucking cheers. That's a soupy fucking beer. And a super fucking beer. Real fucking nice. Tangy blackberry and then, yeah, creaminess. There is a, a real creamy vanilla cake feel. It, it feels like I'm drinking a blackberry cheesecake. There's the graham cracker kind of on the end there. There's a little bit of a sort of crust. Loads of natural creamy blackberry and a, a tangy sort of, uh, yeah, sourness as well. That's a fucking meal in a can. That is thick as fuck. That is real nice though. As I said, just super creamy, loads of really natural, authentic, and yeah, full, full bodied uh, fucking blackberry flavors. The vanilla kind of lingers afterwards, and then you get like a, a tangy sort of tart finish, and the graham crackers kind of just chilling behind all of that. That is fucking awesome. Let's pair it up with the fucking liquid. I was going through some old liquid sitting in me bloody shed the other day and I found uh, this little number, Noms X2. I was a big fan of the uh, Mandarin Cactus Jackfruit and uh, this guy here is a white peach and raspberry flavor and it is pretty fucking delicious. Picked up that bottle of liquid way back in 2019 when I was at uh, the NVE Expo in Connecticut. And uh, yeah, it seems to have lasted just fine. It may not be quite as uh, sort of potent on the nicotine. It might've degraded a little bit, but the flavor, it's right there. It's a really nice, it's that white peach flavor. It's different to your, your regular sort of uh, yellow peach and the raspberry, they go fucking perfectly together. And I think this should be a good mix with our uh, blackberry creamy beer. 
Oh. Oh, that's fucking heavenly. That is fucking delicious. Yeah, the white peach with the, the creamy blackberries. Beautiful. It's really bringing out, I think, more vanilla flavors out of this beer. It's, it's just getting super creamy, real fucking, yeah, just dessert, cheesecake, fruit fucking feels. Oh, that is fucking awesome. Yeah, the raspberry, the fucking peach, blackberries, it's all just mixing in together to make this super creamy fucking beer. Kind of chills out the, the sourness, the tartness that gets kind of pushed aside, I think, from the sweetness of this liquid. But that is a really nice little fucking fruity dessert kind of uh, pairing. Anyway, enough waffling over the bloody hops. Let's get down the up and close. I said we're gonna have a good squeeze over this thing. Do a little comparison, see what's changed since the Kylan V2, and then we'll do a wicking tutorial for you. Let's get in there and have a sticky beak. All fucking right then. This is the packaging. Your Kylan 3 will come in. It's a little window box, kind of similar to what Vandy Vape have been doing recently. Let's see what you get inside. Oh, you got the tank, a straight glass option, bag of spare O-rings, grub screws, a little tool, and a 510 drip tip adapter, coil cutting guide, pair of triple fuse Clapton coils, a user manual, and a QC card. But let's get into it. So it certainly looks like a Kylan. It has that sort of sort of shape to it and the uh, engravings or cuts around around the top here. Um, this sort of design around the base was uh, on the original, the very first Kylan. It definitely uh, has stayed true to the sort of design uh, aesthetics on the exterior. Uh, it is a little beefy. It feels a little bigger than uh, its predecessor, the Kylan 2. Uh, this one came out way back in 2018. So it's been a while since the V2 came out. Now in between now and then there has been like the mesh Kylan, there has been the Kylan 2 Mini, but uh, since the, the Kylan 2, uh, it's been, uh, yeah, nearly fucking five years. But you can see the sort of design similarities there. But uh, I reckon it certainly has a little bit more of a kind of beefier look to it. It still has a 25 millimeter taper at the bottom here, the base. This um, connection point to your mod will be 25 millimeters, but it does flare out quite a bit more than uh, the V2 did and the bubble glass uh, sticks out a bit more as well. Um, you're looking at six milliliters of capacity on the uh, the bubble window. Doesn't say on their site what the straight glass gives you but I would guess it's probably going to be around the four maybe four and a half milliliters but uh, there's not a huge gap between the chimney and the glass with the straight glass so if you're using thicker liquids like 7030 VG you may find you get some sort of slow bubble movement, maybe a bit of airlock. So I think the bubble glass is going to be a better option and six milliliters, certainly good. But yeah, there you go. A little size comparison from the V2. We'll have a look at the decks uh, shortly. Now, as I said, it does have a 25 millimeter base here, but it does get wider. You're looking at 27 millimeters uh, once it sort of flares out to the, uh, the beveled ring around here. And then the bubble glass section will take it all the way out to nearly 32 millimeters. So it is going to be a fairly girthy fucking addy. But let's go through the bits and bobs. You've got Kylan 3 engraved on the side there, but other than that, it is relatively clean. Up the top, you've got an 810 size drip tip. Out of the factory, it's quite snug. There you go. O-rings on the inside there, and I've been able to use my own uh, custom drip tips. It does include a 510 drip tip adapter if you prefer to use a, a narrower tip. Uh, and it has a threaded top cap the old school threaded system, no quick release quarter turn here. They may have done that so that as you're adjusting airflow, you don't accidentally undo the top. Um, but uh, you can see there's a bit of a well kind of right underneath it. So your airflow is basically coming in you know, through here and here, and it's going to go down the side of the, uh, the chimney. But there's capacity in here. You can see the side of the the chimney there, there's quite a bit of room for liquid and that feeds then down further into the actual tank itself. So that's how you're getting your six milliliters because a fair bit of juice stored in here and quite a bit of juice if you fill it right up and you can fill it sort of right up to where the threads start on the chimney there, um, you can get a fair bit of liquid in there. So uh, we just thread that back on. It does have that airflow control, as I mentioned, up the top here, has a little stopper, doesn't spin all the way around. It's pretty airy, I gotta say, a fair bit of uh, airflow there for a, a top-down uh, design. Moving our way down to the base, we've already sort of covered the um, diameters here. It does have a hybrid safe 510 pin, as you can see there, 
protruding nicely out from the 510 threads. If your pin doesn't stick out further than the threads, don't go using it on a hybrid mechanical mod. All right, so let's open up the base here. Now, it does have a quarter turn system on the deck, as you can see there. So be careful when you're unscrewing it from your uh, mod that you don't sort of undo the base and then just pull off the top and pfft, liquid goes everywhere. One potential issue to avoid, make sure you don't um, open it up and then pull it. <laughs> so quarter turn, or it's maybe even less than a quarter turn, it's a very slight turn there and that just slides straight off. You can see that uh, airflow coming in from either side. Your juice flow is coming in through these two holes here. So those two side holes line up with these two. All right, so your cotton's going to be sitting down in these little channels. That's where the liquid's coming through. And the airflow basically lines up with these two large sort of fins. Air's coming down the sides. It's going to go through the honeycomb on either side. So you're getting a fair bit of side airflow. But then you can see there's a little tunnel that goes further underneath and you've got airflow coming out directly under the coil so or the coils it is set up for a dual coil or single coil design you've got two holes on either side so coil leg in each of these coil running this way another coil running this way uh, or you could put one big single coil in here so quite uh, versatile in the fact that you can use it for single or dual certainly go a bigger single coil if you do go for one but i fit two three millimeter in a diameter dual coils in here and uh, no worries at all let's have a quick comparison on the old v2 deck because it has changed up quite a bit from the version 2. Well, firstly the version 2 was a bottom airflow so it came through the base here and then it came sort of straight up underneath and a little bit from the side you had this sort of very shallow half pipe so air sort of forced straight up the middle and a little bit from the sides but now we're coming down and we're going through the sides and the base so you've got definitely a few more degrees of airflow getting to your coil but you've also got the sort of anti-leaking properties of a top-down airflow design so quite a bit of a change in terms of how the airflow works from the v2 but um, certainly similarities in terms of the deck you can see it's still kind of like a, a half pipe system here, a bit more of a squared off half pipe. Um, so the principles are the same, but uh, how it gets there, quite a bit different. And uh, yeah, you got a fair bit of room in there. This will spin, so that can be a little bit annoying when you're building it. Um, you got your grub screws on either side, nice large grub screws. I think you're looking at, uh, what is it, like a 1.5 millimeter Allen key on each of those. So um, no problems with rounding them out. Let's have a look at the uh, the build that I've been using. Now there are a few colors I forgot to mention. Uh, this is the, uh, the polished stainless steel finish, the one that I've been using. You've got the sort of matte stainless steel finish that we've been looking at. It also comes in matte black, gun metal, uh, rainbow as well. So quite a few choices there. So let's have a look at the build that I've been using. As I said, I managed to get uh, a couple of beefy three millimeter ID aliens in here. As you can see there, no problems in terms of width. Plenty of room for two coils. Uh, these are from Coil Turd. Shout out to Beecher. Uh, three strands of 27 gauge uh, wrapped in 37 gauge nichrome. Uh, mine came in at around about 0.14 and uh, they are three millimeters in diameter. One thing you do need to make sure of is that your coils are sort of right in line with the top of this post here or even a little bit below like I've got it. They suggest a coil leg length of seven millimeters uh, and I think when I was cutting mine, I was a little bit lazy um, in the length and didn't quite hit the seven millimeter mark. It was a fraction over uh, and once I set it up, you can see here there's a little bit of a break in one of those wraps and that's because my coil was touching the top cap and I got a short. So um, make sure that uh, you do cut your coil legs to seven millimeters Otherwise, it'll be up too high. And then as you put that uh, top cap down, because it sort of goes on like that, and then as you twist it, it goes down a little bit, you're going to end up kissing uh, your coil and, uh, yeah, getting a fucking hard short. So make sure that you do follow the 7mm guide uh, and also just check that, you know, your, your coil top is not exceeding 
the top of those airflow posts. But yeah, beautiful coils from Beecher. Been a fantastic flavor off of these. As you can see, two three millimeter ID coils fit in here just beautifully, but uh, you could go like a big four, four and a half millimeter single coil. Uh, I reckon two 2.5s would probably work uh, pretty good as well because the airflow is so sort of uh, around the uh, the coil. But uh, that really is about it for the, uh, the look-see. So what we're going to do now is a little bit of a wicking tutorial for you. And there we go, pretty simple, not unlike a lot of other dual coil, sort of big coil RTAs, just cutting the cotton sort of in line with the edge of the tank itself, in line with that sort of black gasket there, give it a bit of a fluff, and then just tuck it into bed, and away you fucking go. So uh, let's get this juiced up, and there you fucking go, the Kylan 3. Let's jump back up top, talk pros, cons, prices, and everything fucking else. So there you go, dickheads, the Kylan 3. Nice little fucking uh, RTA there. Quite a few sort of changes from the V2. Didn't show you the V2 uh, Mini, which is probably something I should have. It's very, very similar to this. The Mini obviously just had space for one coil. This has got space for two. So essentially what they've done is they've taken the Kylan 2 Mini and they've expanded the, uh, the size of the deck uh, and given you space for two coils there. But yeah, if you check out my review on the Kylan 2 Mini, you'll see uh, what I mean. But let's get into the fucking pros and the bloody cons. What do I like? What do I fucking dislike? Well, if you're into your big dual coil RTAs and you like top airflow, then that's what you got here. It's fantastic for those three millimeter inner diameter dual coil builds or your big sort of four, five millimeter whopping um, single coils. And it's quite versatile. Uh, you're able to put in a single or a dual coil Make sure you go sort of a large single coil, but um, the ability to run two different sort of styles of builds in there is definitely a fucking pro ski, and the flavor is fantastic. If you like those bigger coils, if you like your higher wattage uh, RTA vaping, then uh, this is what you got here. It's got uh, plenty of airflow. It's not the airiest dual coil RTA. Obviously, being a top airflow, there are some sort of limitations there, but um, it certainly has plenty of it. The flavor is as good as you get with a dual coil RTA. I don't think there's a whole lot in this sort of category that is gonna beat it in terms of flavor. The way that it's coming in from the sides and from directly underneath really contributes to a tasty fucking vape. And the airflow is very smooth. I think it's a little bit smoother than the version two, just the way that the airflow has been designed with sort of loads of honeycomb on the sides and underneath it. It feels just a little bit smoother and it sounds a little quieter as well, I reckon, um, compared to the V2. So if you like the mini uh, V2, then uh, this is gonna be a dual coil version of it. Capacity has gotta be a pro ski with the bubble glass. Six milliliters on a top airflow RTA is definitely pretty fucking high. I don't know what it is um, with the straight glass. I don't think it's gonna be massive, and you may run into some airlock issues just looking at it. I didn't show you in the up and close. Again, apologies, but it's a pretty tight space between the glass and the chimney uh, with the straight glass on there. But with the bubble, uh, six mils, and I've had no issues with wicking. It's saturated. It hasn't leaked on me. I haven't had any dry hits. Been able to run it at 100 watts and chain bait the shit out of it. I'm gonna get nicked out if I keep going, but it's not drying out at all. It's staying lush and flavorsome. So yeah, wicking, beautiful, capacity good, performance, flavor, airflow, it's all good. Uh, what could I complain about? Any cons here? 
It's a bit of a beefy fucker, particularly with that bubble glass. It's going to be, you know, close to 32 millimeters uh, in diameter. So you're going to want to put it on a decent size mod or else if you knock it over, you might uh, crack the glass. So that would definitely be a bit of a con. It's certainly not compact. Potentially easy to dump your juice if you go to unscrew it from your mod. And I can see right now, if I just twist this, yep, it's undoing the, the whole top section and leaving the base stuck to my mod. So you got to make sure that you really grab the, the bottom of the, the tank and get that off rather than just sort of grabbing the top which you might do on other devices and on other RTAs if you start to sort of unscrew it it's not going to suddenly dump juice but this thing has a small small little twist before the, the deck just comes away from the top so definitely uh, a little bit of a con there in that you could potentially just dump your fucking juice all over your mod if you go to unscrew it and you don't grab it in the right spot but not a big deal just something to mention uh, it is also slightly annoying when you go to fill it having to just twist and twist and twist there's not a quarter turn system now they might have done it like on other uh, top airflow RTAs where you know they're worried about people adjusting the airflow and accidentally unscrewing the top but I feel like that's probably less of an issue um, than they think it is so just a little bit annoying having the uh, the quick release on the deck but not the quick release on the top fill um, it <laughs> should have been the other way around in my opinion, but uh, I'm nitpicking. But apart from that, I don't really have any fucking major flaws here. Just a couple of things to point out. So what are they going to set you back? Well, these are brand bloody new. I was under strict instructions not to post my review uh, until Vanny Vape had them on their website. I've had this now for probably nearly a month and um, they've just listed them on, on the website and uh, nobody else seems to have them up yet. So I can't tell you what they cost, but um, you're probably looking, I would say, around about that sort of $40 US mark 40 or 50 bucks uh, generally you're not paying more than that for a bandy vape RTA so don't expect them to be super pricey certainly uh, one of the more accessible RTA options uh, so if you are looking for a, a top airflow dual coil RTA certainly worth looking at I know there's a bunch of people probably gonna ask me how does it compare to the fucking uh, the blaze from mr. Mike vapes and uh, what was it THC um, I think this has got a little bit more to offer in terms of you can do a big single coil or you can do two, uh, you know, dual coils. Uh, whereas the Blaze, you know, you can only do a, a dual coil. They do have a Blaze Solo now as well, but that's a separate purchase, a separate RTA. So for this, uh, I think giving. So this gives you the option for two different styles, single or dual, in the one RTA, and um, you know I think that's definitely something to, um, to to look at if you do like to change it up a bit. In terms of flavour, as I said, I think this is about as good as it sort of gets from a, a dual coil top airflow RTA. I don't think there's much that beats it probably on par with uh, some of those others that uh, we've had recently, like the Blaze. So uh, yeah. That's about it, dickheads. Don't have much more to say here. I'll fuck off. But I'll put the usual Instagram and Facebook links down in the description if you want to see what this Muppet gets up to outside the YouTube videos. If you want to support the channel, please do hit the like, hit the subscribe button. Always helps me out. But if you really want to keep me behind the lens, then think about hitting some of my support links. As I say every video, this is an independent channel, which means I don't get paid to do reviews, I don't do sponsorships, and I don't do that sneaky jump in the queue fee. I want to make sure you can get a truly unbiased opinion on the shit I'm talking about, but to keep it that way, public support is how I pay the bills. Hit my Patreon page for special content. I do a vlog on there once a week you won't see here on YouTube, as well as our little Patreon community. You can hang out with myself in the Facebook group in the Zoom room, and those fuckers, they keep me behind the lens. So, bloody cheers. But if you can't, that's all good. Sit back, sub on me fucking dicks off, or your bloody tits off. I couldn't give a shit what it is you're vaping on, whether it's the first Kylan, the second Kylan, one of the mini Kylans, or maybe it's a fucking mesh Kylan. Or maybe it's not a Kylan at all. As long as you're not banging the bloody bungers, that's all that matters. Cheers for tuning in. Cheery fucking oh. <laughs>